I'm Amy Heimberger. I'm Vice Chair of Research in the Department of Neurosurgery, as well as the Malati Brain Tumor Institute Scientific Director. I'm a neurosurgeon by training, but my passion uh, lies in the field of immunotherapy. But immunotherapy is a newer field. Um, it's emerged in the last 20 to 30 years from the field of immunology. And the key behind it is really exploiting your body's own immune system that should naturally detect aberrancies like cancers for their eradication. There's a variety of mechanisms that cancers use to evade this detection. Um, as we learn more and more immunology, more and more mechanisms become discovered. But the immunotherapy revolution has really been based on some key sort of breaks of the immune system. And that's where you really see the greatest sort of strides therapeutically um, in the domain of immuno-oncology. We have the first generation of sort of cancers that are responsive. The new sort of thinking is how do we now get these strategies to work against cancers that are not responsive to the immune checkpoint inhibitors. Where we're really moving is in two fundamental directions. The first is towards combinatorial strategies, those kinds of therapeutics that can pull an immune response into the tumor microenvironment or deliver it into the tumor microenvironment. So that will require immune activation strategies in combination with things that control tumor-mediated immune suppression. And the other direction I think we're also moving is towards the selection of the right type of patient for a given immune therapeutic. So another key initiative is to work on biomarkers of potential response or strategies that can enrich patients who could potentially respond to those immunotherapeutic strategies. So traditionally, chemotherapy is there to actually kill the tumor cell directly. And a, there's been a variety of limitations with that. There's resistance mechanisms that pump the drugs out of the brain because it's there to protect the brain. Many uh, chemotherapies have been devised so that they don't get into the brain because again of the side effects and the toxicity associated with those. So chemotherapy exerts its effect directly on the tumor cell. Immunotherapy, what it does is it uses a mediator, a Trojan horse, so to speak, where you're utilizing either the body's own immune cells by either inducing a vaccine response, either you can use RNAs, dendritic cells, peptides, et cetera, where you stimulate the patient's own immune system, or you do what's called adoptive T-cell or adoptive immunotherapy strategies, where you take the immune cells out of a patient, you reinvigorate them in, let's say, a Petri dish or a GMP facility, and then you administer them back to the patient. It's those cells then that actually kill the tumor cells. So let's say you had an infection, like a virus. The immune system would continue activating, activating, activating. There's natural mechanisms to bring that back under hemostasis. So you don't end up with like this T cell response that just goes through the roof. So the tumors have appropriated those mechanisms so that it can essentially modulate or downregulate those T cell responses. So what these immune checkpoint inhibitors do is they essentially block that inhibitory signal. So then the immune cells can actually recognize and hopefully eradicate the cancers. Now, that works in many types of cancers, but in the context of glioblastomas, there's been some very nice studies that have shown that the T cells cannot be restored in glioblastoma patients. So that's a key limitation. So we need to figure out ways to either reinvigorate those T cells with the immune checkpoint inhibitors, like in combination, in combination with other agents, or we're gonna to have to find out some way to push out fresh new T cells that are not, quote, exhausted. I think another area I think is very interesting is exploiting radiation therapy in combination with immunotherapy because radiation therapy can release antigens, some of those targets to sort of get that immune system, you know, reactivated, reawoken, hey, something's wrong here, but it can also pull in immune cells into the tumor microenvironment. And one of the key issues with gliomas is the fact that they don't a lot of times have a lot of these immune effector cells in the tumor microenvironment. So there's a great opportunity to do many types of immunotherapies uh, in combination with radiation and chemotherapy. In the brain are microglia. These are cells that are thought to be antigen presenting cells, haven't been very well studied to date. Now it looks like there might be individual sort of subgroups of microglia, and those subgroups may be capable of doing very different and divergent things immunologically. And some of this is becoming elucidated through things like single cell sequencing. Do microglia directly contact and modulate T cells? Some of this is starting to emerge now from some of this multiplex and mass cytometry analysis. 
So once we start to understand that biology, then we can start thinking about a new set of therapeutics that's not necessarily focused just on T-cells, T-cells, T-cells. Because I find it a little hard to imagine that only T-cells have a key role as far as immune eradication.